Hey guys, it's David from 3D Make It. Today we're going to be reviewing the Anycubic Predator. Let's go! Think back. Think way back. Well, okay, maybe not that far back. We're talking the very first video we did on this channel where we unboxed the Anycubic Predator. Well, we're here to talk about it and give it a fair review now. We've used it for a while. I've even added one to my personal collection. But let's review it, let's look at the stats and see where we sit. The first thing we have to say about the Anycubic Predator is that it's a Delta printer. So we've talked about Core XY printing where the bed moves down and it's the head that moves back and forth. We've talked about Cartesian printers, so that ender behind me there. The bed moves back and forth, the gantry goes up and down, and the head swings back and forth. Well, Delta, Delta the bed doesn't move, so it's always at the bottom, and the head's always swinging, moving the, the hot end around to build the model up. So that's the difference. Deltas generally have round build plates, so we're going to talk the diameter right across that circle there, and it's 370 millimeters, and it goes up, 455 millimeters. So when you're talking print volume, it's fairly close to CR10S range. Because of the circle, you're not going to get like a squared volume of 370. So you are losing a bit of build volume. Um, the print accuracy on it, it's great. Uh, we're talking 0.012. Uh, the nozzle diameter is a 0.4. We've got about 150 millimeters per second maximum print speed. Yeah, maybe go about 110. That's where I like to print on them. The only other thing that's noteworthy is the layer resolution goes down to 5 microns to 0.3 millimeters. So we're talking fairly good resolution there. The hot end on this machine is a V5, so an E3D V5-ish thing. It comes with a heating shroud on mine that was molded, but I've seen them on other versions where it's a printed shroud too. So I'm sure it's dependent on which series and generation you buy. But the V6 hot end is not an all metal hot end, so you're not going to be printing high temperature materials through it. However, the the things that I have put through it, so PLA, I've put some fill through it and a little bit of flex, have all worked perfect. The extruder on this is kind of a tight and narrow sort of feel. It's um, any Cupics version of it, but it does work very well. You can adjust it through screwing the nut on the side. So you have a lot of control about how much you're actually putting pressure on that filament as it's feeding down through that small Bolden tube from their flying extruder set up there. One thing that Anycubic does very well is they, they keep all of the processing in-house. So that means that the controller board is a Tri-Gorilla Pro 32-bit with A4988s on it. So it it's not Trinamic. It's going to be a little bit louder. But honestly, I don't notice the noise compared to other printers that I had with A4998s in it. It's super quiet compared to what the Ender was straight out of the box. Obviously, now that they all have silent steppers in my room, I can hear it more than the others. But still, it's a quiet printer. Anycubic's Trigorilla board, as we mentioned, and Anycubic put that nice screen on the front. That touch interface is awesome. It makes loading filament super easy. There's a nice interface to guide you through printing and leveling. The printer does have auto leveling on it attached to the hot end there, but it's a micro switch. And so what happens is you bring it down, you figure out your Z height. Once that's done, you put on the micro switch and it just touches around the bed and levels it for you. It's not like a BL touch that's always on the printer. And frankly, I've done it once on my printer and we've done it twice on the other Predator. So the Predator stays pretty level once you actually set it up. So let's talk a little bit about pros and cons of the Predator. Well, I've already told you that the Predator can be a little bit loud because it doesn't have Trinamics in it. But they have put a 32-bit controller in it, so that kind of weighs that out for me. 
One thing that I do know is that the firmware on this at the moment is closed, meaning you don't have access to it. And there is some stuff that I would just love to be able to do to it, but I can't because some of those G code commands are disabled. So M503 doesn't work. And there's a few other things that I could set that I just can't. But again, 32 bit board, it still works great, so I don't have any complaints there. It's just I would like to see the firmware. I think a huge plus for this machine is the ease of use through the touch display. It's just amazing. The, the display makes navigating the whole system, heating it up, and even getting a print going easy. The one thing that struck me awesome, and this wasn't even about the Predator per se, but it did come in the printer box, was a good set of tools. The scraper is a good scraper. You got a good set of Allen keys, and for some reason, you get some rubber gloves. So all in all, you get an awesome toolkit with the Predator, which makes the experience that much better. The other thing I'm sure that you may have saw in some of the B-roll that we have going through the video here is the fact that there is a Raspberry Pi sitting on the table right next to the Predator. Yes, Octoprint does work out of the box with the Predator. There's some stuff going around out there that says, oh, it doesn't work. I can't plug in the Predator into Octoprint. It's not connecting. Plug it in, it connects at 1150-200. Um, the auto connect found my USB. Uh, the camera mount I made, I just stuck on the side there. And hey, away it went. So I could control the Predator through Octoprint. The Predator also has an SD card slot on the side of the machine, making it easy to control with the touchscreen, giving a great user experience. Another pro of the Predator is it does come with a very nice manual. Now we kind of showcased this guy on the live stream it's full color nice thick paper it gives you a lot of information to help you set it up the one thing i will say is i am tired of 3d printer companies not sending profiles for the new version of kira or prusa slicer with it i understand that simplify 3d is out there and in fact if you want an out of the box profile for the predator simplify 3d is the only one that has it right now I have on our website, 3dmakeit.ca, I've posted my Prusa Slicer and I've also posted um, my Kira 4.4 profile and machine profiles on there for this printer. But I think that it's time for the manufacturers of these printers, Anycubic, Creality, um, Big Tree Tech, lots of these companies are shipping Kira 14 still. and. We're way past that. We are on uh, 4.0, and I mean, <laughs> relatively speaking, that's maybe three or four years ago, but we are past that, and those profiles don't even import. So you're given old instructions and left to figure out kind of how to make your slicer profiles and, and work your way through it and muddle your way, and I'm, I'm tired of that, and that's not specific to this printer. Like I said, it's all of the printers. So now that I've had my grumpy old man rant and get off my lawn, kids, let's talk about what I think about this printer. Well, firstly, this rocket, this little rocket, this guy, let's let's zoom in, zoom. That's the manual approach. But you can see as the camera gets closer, there is a little bit of layer line showing, but I guarantee you that's just because the camera is zooming in closer to your eye. Um, when I look at this just on the desk here, there's very little layer line showing. The adhesion is great. This is at point two. This is the Astro Print Rocket. You can see that the cooling and the bridging underneath that the model does perform is admirable. There's no sagging, there's no dips. You've got nice sharp points, smooth edges, and round where it should be. So like on the, um, the window there, we've got a nice round edge. So it prints fantastic. I have, very little to complain about the printing quality of this machine. It's solid. It hasn't actually failed me. I've failed it. So when I slice things too fast, when I don't think about what I'm doing, that's when a print fails. This machine, however, has not kicked a bad print off for me yet. It has been solid for the last six months, whenever we unbox that. Now, I will say... Again, that when something was going wrong with this machine, it was us not getting the slicing profile quite correct or sending a print job too fast. Like I said, the fastest we've thrown at this uh, successfully 
it's probably about 120. You, it says up to 150, but we all know how that works. And we actually threw a rod on the one uh, other one that we built, and I'm not sure why. I, th I think that was a manufacturing error, and we just got warranty really quick from uh, Spool 3D in Calgary here, and it was fine. It, it works again, and it's an awesome printer. So if you're starting out or adding to your farm, is the Predator worth the coin? Absolutely. Buy this printer. Take my money. This printer prints awesome. It takes very little time to set it up, maybe an hour. Once you get all the configuration uh, out of the way for the initial setup, so the leveling, it's solid. You rarely have to go back to it. This printer has yet to disappoint me, so I would highly recommend it. Now, if you're looking for slicer profiles, they are on our website, which is linked in the description of this video. Simplify's profile is good, but it is a little misleading with the build volume. So if you are using Simplified, just go check out the build volume section and uh, add a few millimeters. All right, so that's what we think. That's our review of the Predator. We love it and I would buy another one. It's about 340 US dollars right now. So that's about uh, 799 in there Canadian if you're one of our Canadian followers. Uh, it looks like they're back ordered at the moment, but they will be back in stock eventually, I'm sure. They're saying about mid-February for shipping. So if you want one, check eBay, Amazon, even some local vendors probably still have some sticking in stock from the Christmas break here. Or you can order online and, and wait till mid-February to grab one. Hey, so that's our review of the Predator. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're awesome. I'm going to wrap this video up because right now it's minus 22 out Celsius and I had to shut the furnace off to record this. So it's getting kind of chilly. Remember to like, share, follow, subscribe. You guys are amazing. Have a good one.